I'm sure every day you're curious to know what's been buzzing in the real estate market. So here we are again getting you your daily dose of real estate news with Realty Buzz. This is Mansi Dave. Let's get started with the top stories. To start with our bulletin, let us tell you about the buzzword in the real estate industry today. I know this prompts you to think about smart cities and the latest development in the industry is regarding the same. After the launch of the Smart Cities mission and the selection of 98 cities under this scheme, the government is looking out ways to finance its most ambitious urban development scheme. According to a latest development, the government is trying to get a loan from international agencies to finance the Smart Cities mission. Rupees 48,000 crore has been already been approved by the Union Cabinet for the mission. Information has been flown to states from the Urban Development Ministry that the government is trying to procure a loan of $1 billion from the Asian Development Bank and another $500 million from the World Bank to make available funds to the special purpose vehicle to be created for each smart city. A source reveals that every aspect in this area is being worked out and the loan is foreseen to be available by 2016 for use by the first batch of smart city candidates that shall be selected in the second stage of the city challenge competition among the cities that are a part of the mission. The roadmap for financing smart cities was launched by the Urban Development Ministry at the Northern Region Workshop organized for 40 cities. The Ministry asked that states should structure user charges so that operation and maintenance costs are recovered. States were also asked to link user charges to the inflation and improved quality of services. As regards to this, the Ministry is coming up with a model concession agreement in urban water supply based on tariff indexation to inflation to ease risk. This model documents also include risk allotment between public and private sectors, performance standard and coverage targets besides providing for flexibility to urban local bodies. Government wants loan from ADB and World Bank. $1 billion from ADB, $500 million from World Bank. Loan to be available in 2016, states should structure user charges. States should link user charges to inflation. Another story in the pipeline comes from the hospitality real estate, wherein an upsurge is witnessed after a constant period of slowdown. After a prolonged period of downslide, Indian hotels witness a pickup in demand for rooms during the first half of 2015. This is mainly because of an improved economy slowdown in supply of new rooms. Nationwide occupancy crossed 60% for the first time in the last four years reveals the data compiled by Hospitality Data Aggregation Company, STR, global in partnership with HTL India. Further revelations in the report states that markets like Mumbai and Goa witness occupancy rates which cross 70%, while markets such as New Delhi and Pune have crossed 65% occupancy rates. Bangalore and Chennai have crossed 60%. Recovery from the supply surge in the past made Chennai and Pune stand out in the list. Chennai has managed to gain 8.6 points occupancy since the first half of 2013, while Pune gained 8.2 points since the first half of 2014. A decline in the supply of new rooms has proved beneficial to hotels in Mumbai, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Pune, Ahmedabad and Jaipur, which have witnessed the highest revenue per available room in the last four years. Research and consultancy firm JLL reveals that the new supply in this year has been very low compared to the supply with a high reduction in new supply of 4% in the year 2015-16, hospitality is a witness to growth in occupancy and overall performance. October being the peak season that's approaching, hotels could see a raise in average daily rate, which was going through a phase of pressure during the first six months of 2015. Goa has seen slowdown of group and charter inbound travel, which has in turn impacted occupancies along with enabling better rates from free independent traveller. However, this trend shall only stay if the destination is able to attract demand from new foreign markets. The number of higher spending Russian tourists visiting Goa has gone down, which has affected hospitality in the state. The government started the e-tourist visa facility in November 2014, and this in turn has led to an increase in number of foreign tourists visiting the country, which has resulted into the improved performance of hotels. JLL also reveals that slowdown in new supply will benefit hotels this year, while in the following year, larger growth of 10 to 11 percent is foreseen in case of supply. Experts say that the fact that the tourism industry is able to thrive itself is great news. 
They suggest that India should show consistency in brand building exercise and succeed in creating extra capacity for hotel rooms to make stay in the country affordable for tourists. They further add that states should make available land banks which should be provided to developers on a long term lease. They also say that quality of infrastructure needs to be improved including better roads and airport connectivity to ensure maximum number of tourist arrivals in India. That was all about the hospitality real estate outlook. Here we take a short break. Stay tuned. That is an important decision from the government that shall encourage solar energy consumption and power generation in the country. Hello and welcome back after the break. Moving further to the next story, that is an important decision from the government that shall encourage solar energy consumption and power generation in the country. The central government has directed its ministry, states, public sector organizations and all educational institutions across the country to make use of the space available with them to install grid-connected solar rooftop systems. A letter from New and Renewable Energy Ministry has urged these organizations to install solar panels on their building rooftops so that thousands of megawatt of solar power can be generated. Those were the stories that created ripples in the Indian real estate. Now listen in why the US should support Chinese initiative like the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. When you look at China, when you look at all of the great advances that the Chinese have made, yes, 90% of them are due to the hard work of the Chinese people. But there's no aspect of China's modernization that has nothing to do with the United States. Most of the impact that we've had, we've had as a catalyst by the actions of our companies, our institutions, our universities, our mass culture. We have helped change some of the aspirations and a lot of the style of the Chinese people. I think that we should be proud of that. I think this has been good for China. It's been good for the United States. And at the same time, China has a growing impact here in the United States. Tens of thousands, at this point, hundreds of thousands of Chinese students have come here to earn degrees. They're coming at ever younger ages. Many of them have stayed and have founded companies or have become artists or lawyers. And even those who don't stay, who go back to China, they become advocates for strong US-China engagement, as are Americans who've been in China. So this, this has been one of the true win-wins. Uh, Xi Jinping likes to talk about win-wins in US-China relations. This is one of them. Uh, the students who've gone both ways and the things that they've done are cultural influence on each other. The well-being of these people the physical well-being of the Chinese has been just marvelous to behold. Far happier, far healthier, vibrant, energetic, forward-looking people who believe that, that you have seen China get far better over the past few decades, purely at the human level. It's, it's marvelous to see these kids, young people with very bright futures, the scope of which gets greater year by year who are healthy and who think they're going to be able to make a difference. And that reality, which you can't miss if you go to China, I think is, is sometimes missed here in Washington where we tend to think too much in terms of security dilemmas and relative power and we miss the human dimension. And we've played a big part in that and we, we should be proud of that. Um, it's not mainly us, it's mostly about them. And this I think is the main thing about China's, China's rise. We see in America uh, concerns about China's rise, some of which are overblown, some of which are legitimate. But because we're a little bit fearful, we tend to speak as though China's rise is aimed at us. It's not at us, it's for them. China is interested in developing the capacities of other countries moving to its west. China has the capacity to offer major investments uh, including the building of railroads, including airports, highways. It is now well practiced in this. And they want to take this infrastructure capacity all the way to Europe, both to develop its own power and to get more sources of energy and of raw materials, including food for China and for China's growth. But also, I think, uh, a sincere interest in being seen as helping other countries to develop as well. So the United States, in my view, should not be automatically averse to these sorts of moves. China is providing needed capacity. The need for infrastructure investment in Asia over the next 20 years or so is supposed to be about $8 trillion. The World Bank, the IMF, the Asian Development Bank, they don't have that capacity. 
China has a large chunk of that capacity, and the need is very real. So I think that the best American policy would be to welcome China as a regional driver, to welcome China as a provider of public goods, and to participate in some of these new Chinese-led institutions, if we can, in order to help shape them. So that brings our news bulletin to an end. We will be back with important and interesting news from the world of real estate. Till then, stay tuned to Spin TV. Goodbye and take care.